Hello everyone, welcome to Dell EMC Networking OMNM Tech Talk. This is Bill Acevedo, and today's feature we're going to talk about OMNM 6.2 Service Pack 3, uh, what's new um, in this release. And so this release will be available at the end of February, this is 2017. Um, you should be able to get it from the normal download links. So let's get started on what's new. New features devices supported in 6.2 Service Pack 3. We have added uh, support for 9.11 firmware for the FTOS models, and you see the list of models here. Let me just show you that real quick. 9.11, conversions, the driver information tab, and uh, FTOS. And you're going to see here that we have now 9.11 supported. Um, driver support has been added in uh, on this release for a new model. It's the N3132PX model. And I'll show you that as well. It's on the Dell networking device driver. And there's the 3132PX. Okay. Um, we've also added a new driver, a um, Netgear driver. Let's take a look at that one. Go down here to the bottom and you see the Netgear device driver. And like most drivers, you're going to see here a list of all the divided, uh, supported devices and models and firmware on the right here. And uh, Netgear is just another switch model that, uh, that we now support. Oh, another nice feature that we've added is a logs tab. You can now, um, you can now record uh, logging data on your managed resources. And so let me show you that here. The resources. And whenever you right click on a device, you're going to be popped up with a page here. Go to details. And normally you just see these first five tabs. We've added this, this uh, sixth tab called logs. And so what you can do in here is you can go and add new information um, in terms of things that have happened to this device. So, for example, Let's say you want to do, uh, you know, it could be anything, repair or replace something, and then maybe it was unit replaced. The technician is, is uh, just put a name in here, it's just a free, free text screen here. Um, the time, and you can add a comment. And so it allows you to, to uh, maintain a history of, of, uh, of actions that have happened to this device. And so you can uh, then you can go back and report on these. On reports, I've preceded a report for the service logs. Um, there isn't one right now in Service Pack 3. In the next release, we are going to precede this report, so you'll have it. You don't have to generate it yourself. But you can always easily generate your own here. Let me just show you what that looks like and where to get these attributes. So I just called this uh, Service Logs Standard Format. And if you um, navigate to the inventory type of Service Log, you're going to get these options here for your report. Let me create a new one. I'll just show you where to navigate. New. So I can table report. And then under source, you're going to go into oh, inventory. I believe it's under S. Tori, oh, there it is, RS. So service log is right there. So here you see the service log attribute, and then here are the potential fields that you could add. And I've created a sample report where I've added these already. And so let me just show you what that might look like. Execute the report. And we get generated down here. We can look at it. So here you see a couple that I just entered this one. Your mind, this was the last one I just entered. But you see here you've got a, a nice report that shows all of the history or the service that was uh, applied to this device. So another nice feature. Okay. Um, some issues have been resolved in uh, Service Pack 3. Um, um, or one thing to note as well is that the uh, the new device, the N3132PX model, there is a, a, a file type called backup config, and that file, if it exists on the box, we can back it up or restore it. The problem is this device doesn't come with a pre predefined value for this file, so you have to create it. So this release note here tells you how to recreate that, and it tells you you must be created first um, in order to do the backup to a backup config file. Um, to make to get around this, there's a couple ways you can fix it. 
Um, the, user, the end user can create this backup config file manually on the box. That's one way. Um, or you can execute a copy running config to backup config, and that will create the file. Or you can do a copy startup config to backup config, and that will create this file so that you can, you can start backing it up. So just be aware that that needs to be there before we can actually back anything up on that, on that particular file. Okay. Um, there was a permissions issue that was identified in the license. Um, you may see this error where you do not have permission to view this application message. Um, and so it most likely means you have an expired feature in the license. And this can happen in a variety of ways. And again, in the, in the next release, it should be resolved. Um, you won't have to do this. But um, in order to get around this problem, um, on the VM, you can reapply the license called vmlicense.xml. And that's in the home synergy directory. Um, and you can just use the standard um, license importer um, command or from the GUI, you can reapply it if you can get to, get to it from the GUI. Um, then you need to reapply the Dell generated SKI license. So the VM license basically lays down the base license again, and then the, the Dell generated SKI license lays on top of that the RTM that's been purchased in the subscription. If you're not using the virtual appliance, the license is just the default license.xml file that comes with the package. And again, lay that down and then apply the Dell generated SKI license. Um, you receive money. Well, this won't happen all the time, but if it does, this is one way to get, this is one way to get around it. And then down here at the bottom here, in some cases we found that on OS systems, even though you're the administrator in the administrator group, you try to install to a map to local drive, it will fail. And this is because in some in some cases um, it, it doesn't have, the, even though you're administrator, you don't have the sufficient pri privileges on that on that drive. And so um, just be aware of that. Um, so there's a couple of ways to fix it. You can, uh, uh, well, one way to fix it is to reset the permissions on that. Um, on that directory. And so we'll go to the next step here. Um, and this happens on Windows generally. Um, again, it's a share drive, like a D drive or E drive, whatever, um, where the, for some reason the administrator or the person in that administrative group still doesn't have permissions to it. So you can go down to your uh, um, authenticated users, pick your user, make sure they have all of these checked, full control and everything. And then on the security tab, um, I'm sorry, if you go into advanced, you're going to get this tab on the right. Again, pick the administrator or whoever's installing um, the administrator's group, and then uh, make sure this box down here is checked that says include inheritable permissions from the object, uh, from this object's parent. And so this is the set of steps here. It's also in the release note where to go, what directory. And then there's some additional steps here on how to change the file permissions and then describes what's, uh, what needs to be changed here and how to stop um, process for stopping and restarting the server. So that should, that should pick up if the install fails in the middle because of that. Um, you can pick up here with these steps and that will complete the install for you. Okay, that really sums it up for Service Pack 3. It was just a light release and uh, with a few key items and um, um, I hope that was helpful and thank you for joining us.